Well, happy Sunday, Shoreline City. You guys ready for a great day? Yes? Hey, let's welcome everybody who's watching online and everybody who's in the chapel as well. Clap our hands for all of them. Thrilled that you are here today. Glad all of you are here. I'm excited about today. This is actually Palm Sunday. This is the week before Easter. Those of you who don't know that, that's okay. Um, I'm letting you know. A little bit of calendar update. Uh, this is the day that Jesus Christ, uh, we celebrate that Christ came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And the reason it's called Palm Sunday, there were all these palms that individuals were waving at him as he came in. They shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. Uh, but we're not preaching about that today. That's not what we're talking about uh, today. We're actually going to talk about a whole different passage of scripture uh, that I hope will be an encouragement to your heart and into your life. But we've been in this series called Follow Back, and it's all about how different individuals interacted with Christ and what you and I can learn from those interactions. So if you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. If you didn't bring your Bible, put the scripture on the screen for you and everyone who's uh, with us in the chapel. Uh, you should be able to see this on the screen uh, as well. Matthew uh, chapter 15, we're going to begin reading in verse 21. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from the, that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his, his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your, requ your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. I, I want you to go with me now to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Same story. Uh, two different gospel writers give uh, slightly varying accounts of the same interaction. Mark chapter 7 Beginning in verse 24, uh, Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. We talked a couple of weeks ago, actually every week over this whole series about how I'd like for you guys to read the Bible. Now, some of you are old school. You bring, you know, a notebook and you write things down that I actually say. Others of you, you don't care what I say at all. <laughs> you just hear so your parole officer knows that you went somewhere on Sunday. <laughs> Kidding. But I see people taking pictures of the screen and, and different things at times. But, but again, I just want to, I want to share uh, this with you because this, this is important. As you come to the Bible, there are some good questions that I want you to ask. It will help your understanding and my understanding of the scripture. We want to ask questions like, uh, who are the main characters in this particular passage? What's going on in the passage of scripture? We want to uh, ask uh, questions like, what, what does this tell us about God? What does this tell us about us as human beings as well? What, what should we do in light of all that God has done? All these six, seven questions that are written down. Uh, uh, ask yourself, what's the context of the particular passage of Scripture? All of these things will help you understand what's going on in the story a whole lot more. Um, so for all of us uh, in here, this, this woman here, she has been... Um, she has been uh, really pushing me forward 
Uh, my wife is the favorite woman in my life, hands down. Okay, she's my favorite. She's number one. My, my daughter, she's the number two uh, woman uh, in my life. She keeps trying to take the number one spot, but I tell her all the time, I like your mom more than you, but you're really close, Elle. You're really close. You're two and you're ador adorable. Uh, my mom's number three. My mom's the number three woman uh, in my life uh, for sure, so I'm thankful uh, for her. Uh, this woman in this passage of scripture might be number four. She might be the fourth woman on my list. As I've been reading through this passage of scripture, I've been feeling somewhat uh, like an actor that's in a movie and an actor talks about how uh, the character that they are playing almost becomes a part of them, that the character uh, that they are portraying uh, has a, a personality, has a temperament, and, and the actor has to take on that temperament in order for you and I to believe what was going on. This woman, as I'm reading her story, she is not a fictional character to me. She is not two-dimensional. She is not someone that's just on a piece of paper that has no life to her at all. As I am reading through this woman's story, I am being incredibly challenged by this woman. This woman is pushing me forward. This woman right here has the audacity to believe for the impossible. This woman right here won't take no for an answer. This woman right here has backbone. This woman right here is willing to step into uncharted territory and do something that other people might not be willing to do. This woman right here ought to push your faith and push my faith to go from indifferent to strong, to go from weak to bold. This woman right here needs to challenge every single one of us to adjust how we we live our lives and how we look at Jesus. Again, as we're looking at context, Jesus has had this interaction with some Pharisees. He's been talking to some of the religious leaders of the day, and they've kind of gotten into it. There has been a verbal battle that has taken place, a rap battle, if you will. They've gone back and forth, and, and Jesus uh, has this interaction with them, and the Pharisees are not excited about it. They are upset with Christ, and Christ uh, leaves and goes to another vicinity. He goes to Tyre and Sidon, and in this particular area that he is in. It is a not a Jewish part of the country. It is more of a Gentile part of the country. He is once again going to an area where maybe everybody might not celebrate him all that much, but he shows up here and this woman has this interaction with him that has been blowing my mind. But let's look here for a second at Mark chapter 3, verse number 8. I need to show this to you because this is really, really important to the context of the story. When they heard about all Jesus was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idema, and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. I, I want you to see in Mark chapter 3, the fame of Jesus is beginning to spread. His fame is now reaching its way into a, a Gentile side of town. And now I want you to think about this woman. This woman in Mark chapter 7, she has a sick daughter. Someone that is really, really close to her. Uh, let me just make this really, really clear. And parents, you already know this. There is no pain like kid pain. No pain. When your kids hurt, you hurt. When your kids are battling something, you as the parent are battling something. Now, of course, this is true for brothers and sisters as well. You can feel that pain. But you can't, you don't quite understand it until you're a parent. 
you're not less than. Anybody in here who's not a parent, you're not less than, okay? You're still a whole individual and Jesus loves you. I'm just talking for a second. You, you think when you see a parent that is, that is battling something, sometimes you see parents that will exhaust all of their wealth to help one child who keeps going into rehab and keeps relapsing and relapsing and relapsing. And you say, why is that parent doing that? That is so foolish. That is so dumb. Why in the world would they ever help that kid that many times? Times, but as a parent, you almost can't help yourself at times. You want to give your child everything. You will bankrupt yourself to help your child get what your child needs. Some of you are in a college right now that your parents can't afford. But they're giving you everything. Because that's what parents do. Some of us in here have felt this pain when we first, we had our first uh, child, this was 13 years ago now, Parker's now 13, we can't believe it, he's growing up. I saw him this morning, so he's getting all ripped and everything, but I just push him down every now and then to remind him <laughs> who the man in the house is, <laughs> sweep his legs, just don't forget it, son. But, uh, but he's growing up so, so, so much. Uh, but when we first had him, man, we would go, we went to that first doctor's visit, and uh, he was going to get his shots. And I know everybody in here is not four shots. It's okay. Hey, don't judge me. I won't judge you. But so we did the immunization thing, and uh, he's getting his shots. And Onika, she is the sweetest woman in the world. She's like, I cannot handle this cry right here. I have to leave. So she left me in the room. And I'm thinking, I can't handle the cry either. So I leave the room too. No, I don't. I didn't. I didn't. I stayed in the room, and I'm holding, I'm holding our son, and he is letting out this cry. It's a blood-curdling scream. It's like the worst pain he's ever experienced in his entire life. Now, shots are one thing. Cancer, it's a whole different thing. When parents have to go to the hospital and and watch their kid be poked with needles and get IVs and see their children go in for surgery and watch them go under anesthesia and hope that they come out on the other side just fine. When parents have to see all of this, it'll make you do all types of crazy things. So please don't throw rocks at any parent that is battling and fighting through so much stuff. You just will go that far for your kids. So here is this woman, and she has a daughter, and her daughter is sick. Her daughter has problems. Her daughter has issues. Her daughter has struggles. And this woman here, maybe she heard about Jesus in Mark chapter 3. Maybe she heard about this Jewish Messiah that had come on the scene and was healing people and she's looking at her daughter eyeball to eyeball and she's saying to herself if I ever get a chance to meet that man I will not let that moment slip by me my daughter means too much to me for me to sit by and just relax in this moment maybe she's sitting there Hoping for another chance, hoping for another chance, hoping for another chance, hoping for another chance. Now, there is no Instagram, okay? There is no Facebook check-in on, on, on Jesus' day. Maybe they're sending pigeons. Hey, Jesus is here. I don't know uh, what is happening, but somehow the Bible says this woman hears. This woman hears that Jesus is on the scene. Maybe she has been waiting for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. So she gets up from her daughter and she begins to go after Jesus. Hey, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. This is her announcement that you're the Messiah. This is her announcement that I believe you are who you say you are. This is her announcement that I believe you have power. This is her announcement that you can do the impossible. This is her announcement that you are the mighty one. And she is shouting and shouting and shouting and shouting. And she's shouting so much because she's so desperate because because the situation in her life is, is falling apart. Some of us in here today, you look good on the outside. But there's a situation in your life right now that is falling apart. 
There's a situation in your life right now where things are not working out the way that you want them to. There's a situation in your life right now where the company's not taking off, where the marriage is, the marriage is falling, where the relationship, you thought you were going to marry this guy or this girl, but things are looking really rocky right now. There's something going on in your life right now that is absolutely desperate. And this woman chooses not to wallow in her desperation. This woman chooses to go after the one that has the answer. She does not just sit. She gets up from where she is and she goes over and she begins to shout to Jesus, shout to Jesus, shout to Jesus. I like this woman. I like this woman because she's determined. I like this woman because she's a fighter. I like this woman because she has guts. I like this woman because she won't take no for an answer. I like this woman because she won't back down. This is before Aaron Brockovich. This woman is standing there saying, I am coming after what I need from this Savior. I am not going to turn away. I will not be deterred. I will not be pushed down. I will not be shut up. But look who's trying to shut her up. It's the disciples. Church people. Church people. Shh. Be quiet, lady. Be quiet. Church people. Church, here you have a woman that's trying to interact with a, a, the Savior, and the church people are the ones putting up the barrier saying you can't come in. Man, church people, what is our deal? Why in the world do we think like this? Why in the world are we all about putting up gates and walls and barriers for people? Why do we try to make it so difficult for somebody to interact with the Savior? Why do we label people so much? Why do we say, oh, you're this, so you're that, so you can't come. Oh, you're black, you're white, you're Hispanic, you're Asian, you're gay, you're straight, you're tall, you're short, you're a man, you're a woman. We have all, you're Republican, you definitely can't come. Oh, you're a Democrat, you definitely can't come. Oh, you're Oh, you're against gun. We got all these different rules that we have when individuals are just desperate trying to get to Jesus. And I don't want to be a church that gets in the way when someone's trying to get to the Savior. Why in the I'm glad somebody didn't make it hard for you. I'm glad somebody didn't put a whole bunch of hurdles in front of you. I'm glad we are a church that says, I don't care if you're able-bodied or if you have some type of deficiency in your body. I don't care if you have your PhD or if you have your GED. If you are after Jesus, we will roll out the red carpet for you and you can meet with him. Church people. What type of church people are you going to be? You choose it. Because no one really thinks that like they're a racist or a sexist. Because in your head it makes sense. In your head it's like, oh, no, 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 this makes total sense. Do you interact with someone and like, hey, how come, why do I have to do this song and dance to meet Jesus? When Jesus just got on a cross and said, whosoever will come, I'll save him. Whosoever will come, I'll make him clean. Whosoever will come, I'll put him on a right path. Whosoever will come, I don't care if they're in Highland Park or Fair Park. Whosoever will come, they can, they can come, they can come, they can come. And here are the disciples going, no, we're going to make it difficult for you. <laughs> we will not be that type of church. You tell every broken friend of yours, you tell every rich friend of yours, you tell every female friend, every male friend of yours that Easter is open to all of them. Tell them that this building will not fall in on them. You let them know that there is a spot for them here. And you let them know that the grace of God is ready to meet them exactly where they are. The disciples are the ones saying, shut up. Be quiet, lady. Be quiet, lady. But this woman, <laughs> I like her. I like this girl. This woman right here is strong. 
This woman right here hears what the church people are saying, hears what all the men are saying to her, and this woman doesn't run and retreat. This woman steps up and says, okay, bring it. I will go even harder. I'll push even more. I'll ask even louder. I'll pray that much more. This woman right here has some guts. I feel like, I feel like we're too weak. Too weak, too weak, too weak. We're deterred way too easy. We're deterred way too easy. The, the first time something gets hard to us, we're like, God, how come this didn't work out? And God's like, are you serious right now? Are you going to let that thing right there be your obstacle? I defeated death, hell, and the grave. I just put this thing here in front of you to remind you who you are. You can get through this thing no problem. I think, I think this woman actually went through so much pain in her life. And the pain was to position her for this moment so she would have the power to step fully. I got another P for you. Into her potential. All of those P's. Right? Boom, 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 boom. I think this woman right here had so many things come against her in her life. And all the things that were coming against her were there to prepare her for this moment. And if she would have given up a long time ago, she would have not had the strength to step fully into this moment in her life. But because she fought through so many other things, because she did not give up, when this moment came, when everyone was telling her to shut up, she was ready for it. She was ready. I just want to talk to women in here who have been through something in your life. I want to talk to women in here for a second that have had, that have had to fight some battles. I want to talk to some women in here that understand what it's like to be rejected, understand what it's like to be marginalized, understand what it's like to be pushed down, understand what it's like to be forgotten about. And I want to let you know God will use every single trial you have ever been through. And all of it was to prepare you for where he's trying to take you. Stop blaming the world, pointing at the world. I'm telling you, the world was just put here to help you get stronger because God has something on the inside of you that he wants to see this world experience. Step fully to the plan and purpose that God has for your life. But men, it's for you too. Because your, your friends will try to tell you, oh, be quiet. You don't need to go to church. Don't go to church. That's for weak people. That's for weak people. No, you, don't need, you need God. You need God? Don't go to church. Hey, don't serve. Don't, 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 don't help out with the kids. Don't be in the parking lot. Hey, don't, you don't have to do all that. Hey, why are you sleeping with one woman? You need, to, you need to sow your oats, man. You need to make sure you get out there. And you got all these other people trying to talk to you in your head. And I'm telling you, all of those things are not there just to pull you back. They are there actually to make you stronger. It's the God of heaven allowing the trials to come your way so you can be formed and fashioned and you can be someone that is ready for the punch that the world will try to throw at you. So when the time is just right, you will stand and you will not crumble. Stop despising all the pain. The pain was on purpose to help you get ready for this moment right here. Had the woman not walked through some things, I don't think she would have been ready for this moment. See, in our day, we like everything quick, 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 quick. Fast, 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 fast. You can favor something right now. Get it? You want you want to beat kale juice from Whole Foods? Get on your app right now. Thirty minutes to be here. You you want something sent to your home tonight? You think? Pot roast tonight. You, you, can get on, you can get on Amazon Prime right now. Get it sent to your house right now. Depending on where you live will depend on if it's still on your doorstep when you get home. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. Be nice. If you got pregnant, then you just had the baby the next day. Ah. This pregnancy thing is nothing. What are they talking about? Stretch marks. I got no, no, that's not how it works. It's part of it, okay? And you're beautiful. You're beautiful. It's just part of it. 
Want everything quick, want everything quick, want everything quick, want everything fast, 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 want everything fast. And I'm just telling you, we give up way too easy. We stop way too soon. We give up so quickly. When God doesn't do what we want him to do in the first three weeks, we stop. But if you want to get anything off the ground that's going to do anything significant in this world, you can't have three-week faith. you got to have faith that will last from Mark chapter 3 all all the way to Mark chapter 7. You got to have the type of faith after you hear about it, you keep holding and you keep holding and you keep holding and you keep holding and you keep waiting for God to show up and you keep waiting for that moment. And when your moment comes, don't you dare run the other direction. You run to Jesus and you shout to Jesus, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. I need you in my marriage. I need you in my business. I need you in my mind. I need you in my heart. I need I need you in my finances. I need you. And if everybody else tries to tell you to shut up, you've been waiting too long for your miracle. You've been waiting too long for your breakthrough. You've been waiting too. You care too much about this situation for you just to throw in the towel. So you've got to have some backbone, church. You and I have got to be more like this woman. I don't care if everybody's telling me to shut up. I will shout all the more loudly because he has my answer. He has my answer. So here's this, this woman here. And I want you to look at this. Where am I at? Verse 27. Verse 27. Mark 7, 27. First, first let the children eat all they want, he told her. For it is not right to let the children's bread, to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table, under the table, eat. The children's crumbs. Hmm. Uh, maybe some of you are in here. This is part of your date time. You know, you just met on eHarmony. And you're here today. You're like, hey, you need to come to church with me. I like my church. I want to make sure, you know, you go to church. So glad you're here today. Some of you are getting red right now. Like, oh, my gosh, how do I, how do you know my situation? Uh, <laughs> glad you're here. But guys, maybe you take, take, have taken a girl out on that first date, and you're getting your steak and your potatoes. You're like, hey, what are you going to have uh, to eat? She's like, oh, I'll just have a salad. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. I'm not hungry. Just, just a little salad for me. will be Because ladies, right, you don't want to be like throwing down, eating more than the guy at the, on the date. You're like, oh, my gosh, what's he going to think about me if I'm like, yeah, this food's delicious. Yeah, how'd you get on Match.com? Yeah, I love Match.com, but I was, on, I was on Farmers Only for a little while, too. And you, just, you, 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 you don't want to be that lady. Oh, this, this salad's perfect. This salad is perfect. You leave the date, call your girlfriend, girl, let's get the twisted root immediately. I need a burger and some fries. I am hungry. That man in front of me got dessert too. You say all you need is a salad, but you know you're really, you're really hungry for more. But this woman, nah, this woman says, uh, Jesus, I just need a crumb. I just need a crumb. I don't need a five-course meal. I don't need steak and potatoes. I need no gravy at all. I don't need dessert. All I need from you is just a crumb. Because in your crumb is enough power to meet the need that I have. So I don't have grandiose expectations that you have to give me everything. As a matter of fact, if you gave me everything, it would be too much for me. So all I need from you, Jesus, if you can spare just a tiny little crumb, because there is enough power in your crumb to meet my need. I know that you have so much ability. You have so much strength. I don't even need you to shout. All I need is a whisper from you, Jesus. 
if I just get a whisper. That will be all I need for you to meet the need that I have right here. I like that this woman is so filled with faith that she says, just give me, just give I just need, I need this, right? I just need, I just need, if I have faith as small as a mustard seed, if I have faith as small as a, I don't need to know all the scriptures. I don't need to know all the Bible. I don't have to go to Bible school. All I need to know is that the God of heaven is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can ask, think, or even imagine. I just need to know that he has enough power in the tippity top of his incy bincy finger to, to, to give me exactly what I need. All I need from you, Jesus, is for you to give me a crumb. And if you give me a crumb, my faith will exceed. Explode and I can attach it to that crumb because that's how powerful. That's how powerful. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to open up your mind. I'm trying to open up your mind and your heart here. You've been believing too small. You've been thinking God is weak. You've been thinking your situation is impossible. You've been thinking that your thing is bigger than everybody else's thing. But the reality is your situation only really needs a crumb of his grace. You just need a crumb. And if you got a crumb, it would meet every need you had. This woman's like, okay, okay, Jesus, just give me. Just give me a crumb. Just give me a crumb. Now, do you see that Jesus, in this interaction with this woman, he said there are children. And then he said there's something else. There are dogs. This right here, this will mess with you. Wait, Jesus, are you calling them? Did you just call that woman? No. <laughs> no, you didn't. You didn't just call her a dog, Jesus. You did not just call that woman a dog. Well, he didn't say it specifically. He kind of talked around it a little bit. But do you see the woman? She doesn't get offended. See, today's day and age, we get offended. We get offended. So would, would you just call me? Hashtag this. March that. She, she did not get preoccupied with what Jesus said about her. Because the issue that she was dealing with was so much bigger than her, she didn't have time to focus on her. I think many times the reason we get offended so easy is because we don't have anything else bigger than us that we're actually living for. We're just living for ourselves so much. But this woman right here has someone that she's living for, and Jesus calls her this dog, and she says, okay. That's still not going to turn me away. That offense is not going to be enough to turn me away. That right there is not going to get me, en that's not enough to get me to stop going to church. That's not enough to stop me from serving. That's not enough to stop me from giving. That's not enough to stop me from praying. That's not enough to stop me from reading my Bible. Too easily we get offended and we want to go and find some other church. Some of you are here right now. You need to go back to your last church that you were in. Uh, you're going to find the same problems here because the problem is not us. The problem is you're easily offended. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. But if you'll get a backbone, if you'll be willing, if you'll be willing to not be easily offended and get your eyes on something greater than you, I think you can experience a miracle where you will go from glory to glory to glory to glory and step fully into who God is calling you to be. God, Jesus says to this woman, first, the, the kids got to eat. Well, this woman, I saw her as a beggar when I first read this, like when, as I was growing up, following my own prejudice in my own head. Maybe because she was begging, I just assumed maybe she was a beggar, but maybe she wasn't. Maybe she was a businesswoman. Used to walking into boardrooms, having people pepper her with questions. So now she's in this moment right here. She's just ready. She's ready. She's ready for what Jesus is going to throw at her. So Jesus says, first, and she goes, well, if there's a first, that means there must be a second. 
That means there must be a third, and there must be a fourth, and there must be a fifth. So you can try to you can say that I'm a dog underneath the table, but you didn't say the dog wasn't in line. You just said the dog wasn't first in line. So I'm willing. I'll wait my turn. <laughs> I'll wait my turn right here. You go and you go and you go and you go and you go. And you. And Jesus sees this woman's faith and says, you know what? I'm going to take you from the back of the line. And I'm going to bring you all the way to the front of the line. Because I haven't seen faith like this ever. That was a... Uh I was flying, uh, I can't remember where I was going. It was a real quick trip. I just had my carry-on bag, just, just my carry-on. And somehow I showed up late. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I think it was before I had TSA pre-check, which is wonderful, by the way. So I got there, and the, it was American Airlines. The, the, the breezeway was totally packed. And I got there, and I gave him a boarding pass. And she says, oh, sir, I'm sorry. Your bag's going to have to be checked. I'm like, no. That's the worst thing in the world, right, if you just want to have your carry-on. No, 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 no. Don't, don't check it. Don't check it. I just want to be able to get off the plane and go right to the car. Don't check. I don't want to have to wait at that carousel going around and around and wonder if you guys are going to get this bag underneath the airplane and get it all the way. I, I, can, I cannot have that. Please, man. Please, man. And I'm batting my eyes. I'm rubbing my bald head. I'm giving her hugs. I'm saying, I'll pray for you. I'm doing everything I possibly can. And she's like, no, sir, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I'm like, okay. So I gotta, I, now I got to take my bag and I got to open it up. I got to take out my Bible because I'm a pastor. And I got to take out my headphones because you got to have your music. And I start taking out my notebook and all my stuff. So I got my underwear all out in the breezeway. And people are standing there looking at me I'm like, sorry, you know, Hanes. I like Hanes. And I, so I'm, go, I'm going seeing all of this. And the lady, uh, the, the uh, flight attendant looks around the corner. She goes, hey, I think I recognize you from somewhere. And I'm like, uh. Where? <laughs> I th are you a pastor? Who's asking? <laughs> and she goes, well, I think my son, I think my son, or my daughter, I can't remember. I think my son or daughter goes to your church. And they've been saying great things about it. And thank you so much for helping them. So I'm like, okay, thank you, man. I don't know if she's, I'm trying to think I'm T.D. Jakes. Bro. I'm like, get, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. I, I don't know who she thinks I am. <laughs> I tell her the name Shoreline. She's like, yeah, that, that's the church, that's the church. She goes, wait, hey, close up your bag. And then she takes my bag. And there's a line of 50 people. They're all waiting. She just pulls my bag all the way. I see her pulling my bag all the way up. I stand in the back of the line. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Then she stops and looks back. <laughs> Pastor. Pastor. So all the people in the line turn and look at me as well. I start walking down. I'm so sorry. So sorry, sorry. She asked me, her, her son or daughter goes to the church and I think something good happened in them. So I'm walking past, she has my back. I'm walking past all of them. This is what grace has done for all of us. It takes us from the back of the line when you know you were broken and you know you don't deserve a thing and you know that you'd be lost without his hand and you're fine just to be getting on the plane. But God says, hey, I'm not just going to let you get on the plane. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to take you from that spot and I'm going to have you pass by all these other people and put you in the front of the line because my grace is sufficient and my power is made perfect in weakness. This is what God has done for so many of us in here. We know where we ought to be. We know where, what hole we ought to be in. He pulled us. He pulled us. He pulled us. This woman here has, she's been inspiring me, y'all. She's been, she's been pushing me. You might think that Jesus was outwitted by the woman, but he wasn't. 
Jesus is so much of a Jedi mind trick master that he's asking the woman the questions and putting the stumbling blocks in front of her that she needs to pull out of her what he knew was always in her. So every time he's throwing something at her, he's saying, I know you can handle it. I know you can handle it. I know you can handle it. I know you, I won't give you anything that you can't handle. So if it's in front of you right now, you can handle it. I won't give you anything that you can handle. If you think this is gonna crush you, it's not gonna crush you because I won't give you anything that will crush you. I will always give you something where you know with me, you will triumph over that thing. I don't know what you're facing. But what I know is, whoo, the God of heaven knows what's in you. He's trying to pull it out. Trying to pull, I want you to, this is a church, I want to pull out everything that's on the inside of you. I want to see the plan and purpose that God has in you. Come on out. I don't want you being an armchair quarterback. I want you being the one that God called you to be, being the man he called you to be, being the woman he called you to be, stepping fully into the plans and purposes he has for your life. I got I to gotta, I gotta shut up. Grab these cards. Grab these cards here in the uh, seat back pocket in front of you, in the, in the chapel. They should be on the seat as well. If they're not, for whatever reason, ushers scramble right now. Grab the impossible cards. They say impossible. Grab the impossible cards. Grab the impossible. Grab the impossible cards. Grab the impossible cards. Man. Woo. This woman goes for those. Listen, this woman goes for those who can't go for themselves. This woman goes for those who cannot go for themselves. This woman goes for those who cannot go for themselves. Her daughter is sick. Her daughter can't make it to Jesus, but the, but the mom can. So the mom goes. What the daughter can't do, the mom does for the daughter. This is what these cards represent. Who do you need to go for? Who do you need to pray for? What cousin? What, what sister? What father? What mother? What situation? I want you to grab these cards. I literally want you to write down your prayer request right now. Write down your impossible prayer. I, I, just do it now in the chapel in here. Begin to write it down right now. Write it down. Grab your pen out. Jot it down. Woo. Man, this woman's been pushing me forward. She's been pushing me forward. Everyone told her, you're Greek. You're dirty. You're on the outs. But Jesus said, no, I got a spot for you. I got a spot for you at the table. I got a spot for you at the table. My impossible prayer. If you want to write it down, balcony, on the floor, in the chapel, just write it down for a second. Let's trust God for miracles. Who do you need to invite to Easter? Who do you need to bring? Who do you need to ask that, that God would save their soul next week? There's people in our church right now that came last Easter. They just needed an invitation. This is the one week a year where people go like, okay, I'll go. I'll go. And we're going to trust for God to grab a hold of their hearts so much, so much love. They're like, oh my gosh, why is everybody so happy here? Uh, we love you. We just love you. Write it down. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads just for a moment. If you're still writing, you can. In the chapel here, just bow your heads just for a moment. It'll give us a chance to, to respond to what God is trying to do in our hearts and our lives right now. If you're here today, you've never given your heart and your life to Christ. You've never made him first. You've never made him number one. You've never made him boss of your life. And you're here and you're saying, I don't want to go my own way anymore. I want to go his way. I don't want to be in the driver's seat of my life anymore. I want Christ to be in the driver's seat of my life. I'm not asking, do you have a Bible or have you been to church? I'm asking, are you ready to surrender your life to serving Jesus? Maybe there was a time you followed him. There was a time you surrendered. But you slipped away. You've caught in another direction and you're here today. The God of heaven is saying he loves you. 
He wants to change you and transform you into the man and woman he destined for you to be. If you're here today and that's you, you want to give your heart to Christ for the first time or rededicate your life to serving him, I'm going to ask you to do something simple but something incredibly bold. Literally on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to shoot your hand in the air and say, yes, that is me. I want to give my heart. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Here's the moment for you, a brand new start, a fresh beginning. Ready? One, two, three. Just lift your hand up. You say, yes, that is me. I want to give my heart. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to make him first. I want to put them first. Put it up high. Put it up high. Put it up high. You're saying, yes, that's me. That's me. Uh, this, is, this is a moment for you saying, God, I sense you're, you're, you're working on my heart, and I'm responding to you. I'm responding with a yes. I'm responding with a yes. I'm saying, I want you to have all of me, all of me. There's hands going up all over here. One of our greatest honors to see be a part of this moment every week. I'm going to ask everyone in this place to do me a favor. Put your hand over your heart if you wouldn't mind. I'm going to ask everyone to repeat this prayer after me out loud. Say, dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I admit I've made mistakes. And today, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Give me the power to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, let's lift our heads up and clap our hands with enthusiasm. For every friend and family member of ours that's getting on this path and journey of following Jesus, we celebrate this moment in your life. Hey, uh, if you're not done filling out your My Impossible Prayer cards, you can continue to do that. But also those of you in here who are first-time guests, let us know that you are here with us today. These Connect cards, you can fill that out for us. If you have any other prayer requests, maybe you want us to know about it because of My Impossible Prayer, you're going to hold on to. But these other... Uh, cards. You actually get to drop in these little white buckets that are, that are going to go by. We'd love the chance to pray for you, whatever is going on. I was talking to a gentleman before service today, and, and his family is going through some things. And he said, I'm going to write down my prayer request. And what we're going to do as a, a team and as a church family is we're going to pray for you. And stand by your side and trust God for a miracle. Uh, as you're filling out your Connect cards, uh, I do want to make this next step really, really clear for those of you who raised your hand. I'm going to ask you to give us one year. I'm going to ask you to go all in with us because I don't want you to be someone that hits a home run and then just watches the ball go over the fence and doesn't run the bases. You got to run the bases. Get connected in church. Begin to serve. Get involved in community. Use the gifts and talents and the story that God has given you to make a difference in other people's lives. You're going to have to do this if you want to become all that God is calling you to be. You were never designed to live life alone. You need a community. You need a church family. So give us one year. As you're filling out your offering envelope, uh, as you're filling out your Connect card, I also want to remind us of the wonderful opportunity we have to give uh, right now. And those of us who have been a part of Shoreline for at least the last number of months, you will remember our Heaven to Earth offering. And we had a dream and a plan and a goal to raise $450,000 for our kids' wing and for the launch of our Bishop Arts Campus. And I'm happy to tell you $350,000 has come in for that. So we've been able to complete the entire kids' wing. We're still $100,000 short for Bishop Arts, but we're, I know there's a lot of individuals saying, hey, you know what, I actually kind of fell off a little bit, but I'm about ready to jump back on. Hey, let's jump on together. Let's make it on earth as it is in heaven because there are real people's lives on the other side of our generosity. For my wife and I, we actually use the app uh, to give. So we have a new app, and, and you can give uh, that way. Others of you choose to do text to give, and others of you give online or even in an envelope. But however you choose to give, I want to encourage us, challenge us to keep putting God first so we can keep seeing lives change, not for our glory, but for His as you're taking out a moment and filling out your Connect cards and uh, filling out, uh, maybe giving on the app, I'm going to ask a couple of friends of ours and pastors on staff to come up here, share a couple of brief announcements with us, and then you'll be dismissed in just a second. Come on up here, Ben and Casey. Awesome. Thank you for that word. Yes, Good morning, what a powerful church. word. Good morning, everybody. Was that not great or what? So good. Oh my goodness. Well, my name is Ben Stokes, and this is my beautiful wife, 
Casey. And as Pastor Earl was talking about the Connect cards, uh, we want to make sure to just grab those. And if you're new here or if you've just given your heart to Jesus, any of that, make sure to fill that out. And later the buckets will be passed and you can drop them in there. But bigger than that, we want to know your name. We want to shake your hand. We want to know your story. So come and find us in the black welcome tent or the uh, Connect Center table out here in the south lobby so that way we can shake your hand. Awesome. Well, Easter is just next week. We are so excited. Easter is the one time when everyone is looking for somewhere to go. So let's invite them here. Let's show them the Jesus that loves them, the Jesus that rescued us all and can transform anyone. So we have six services for you. Friday at 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. and on Sunday at 9, 10, 11, and 12. You do not want to miss it. Today in our lobby, right outside the doors, we have yard signs, we have brave cards, and we have posters. Make sure you grab one and stick it in your yard. Take a poster and put it in your gym, in your coffee shop, in your office, at work. Tell your family and your friends. Take this opportunity to invite someone. It could change their life. We are so excited at all that is happening here. If you are on social media, we also have a photo wall out there. We want you to stop by and take a picture. Hashtag Easter at Shoreline City. Post it on Facebook and on Instagram. It is going to be a life-changing weekend. You do not want to miss it. That's great. Hey, this church, I mean, we are moving. So many exciting things over the horizon. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. So we want to make sure that you know all about every single one of them. So make sure to follow us on our Instagram and Facebook and our social media pages. And also you can check out shorelinecity.church for all of the latest events. Uh, since you have get, uh, had time to fill out your Connect card and prepared your offering, we are now asking for the ushers to pass the buckets. But we would love for all of you to stand right now. And this incredible message that we just heard, allow God to seal it in your hearts as we worship together. Chains fall, fear bows here and now. Jesus, you change everything. Life's you hold out here and now. Jesus, you change everything.
So take out your card, wave it at me so I see that you know what I'm talking about. And on the count of four, we're going to all hold it forward like this because we're going to take a big picture. Ready? One, two, three, four. Hold it out because we are praying impossible prayers and we want Dallas and Beyond to know that we are praying for them. Did we get it? Awesome. And this time I'd love for our prayer partners to come forward. At the close of every service, it's our honor to pray for you. Anything going into your family, your heart, your school, your world, God can handle it. And we believe that he can make what's impossible, possible. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for every single person under the sound of my voice. I thank you for every person in the chapel, every person watching online, every person in the balcony, every person on the floor. I thank you that you know all of us by name, that you know every circumstance and situation that we're facing. And I pray that the spirit of the living God would overwhelm us with peace, with strength, with grace. I thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I thank you that our greatest days are ahead. I thank you that old things are passed away and all things are becoming new. I speak a blessing over every single person. Would you strengthen us, Father? Would you fill us with your presence? In Jesus' name, and we all said amen. We love you. Have a great week. We are so honored to have you joining us today. Hopefully, you've been inspired to make it on earth as it is in heaven. For more information, please visit our website at shorelinecity.church.